Hello and welcome to Solid IRA. My name is Mike Rosica. This is part three of a series of recordings that will help you start your retirement process, uh, putting a fund together that is essentially your own bank and filling that bank with assets that are going to pay you for the rest of your life, uh, hopefully even more. Uh, something that your family can enjoy, uh, but it's a process and it starts here in the beginning, uh, the beginning steps. Very exciting, in my opinion, uh, when I started my journey with my self-directed IRA in 2007, I had no idea what one was. I had no idea that this was even available to me. And the tax benefits alone are unbelievable. I'm actually stacking money inside of my self-directed IRA, tax-free and tax-deferred. And that is exponential growth. It just grows so rapidly. Why? Because you're not allowed to touch it. Uh, it has to grow. And if it sits idle, at least it stays flat at zero until you get ambitious enough to get cracking on it and start working it again. Uh, it's something that you kind of go back and forth, uh, you know, where you spend your energy most. Uh, I found that uh, I've, I've had it where it's laid dormant for three years. And then uh, I get motivated. I am starting to hang around with the right people again. And they get me motivated. They're showing me deals. I'm showing them deals. We start partnering. We get things going again. And that's what this club atmosphere is with Solid IRA. I want this to be an environment where people are sharing ideas, deals, um, <clears throat> and just the actual energy of keeping this thing going. Because let's face it, if you're not going to work on your self-directed IRA and your retirement goals, no one else is going to be there to push you along. Maybe, maybe your spouse, which she should or he should push you in the right direction. Hey, let's get some deals going here. Let's keep moving in the right direction because it's very easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day life of, of, of the directions that, that life takes us. And it's so easy to kick the can down the road and say, you know what, I'll do my retirement thing next week or next month when I get an extra few bucks or an extra few minutes or something. But you really need to make a dedicated assertion of your energy on a consistent basis for this thing to grow. Now, it could be an hour a week. It could be an hour every two weeks. Uh, sometimes I spend four or five hours uh, a month on it uh, all at once. And it may involve making some phone calls and finding some deals. So let's dive in. Let's get into how the normal person in America saves for their retirement. For the most part, uh, I'm guilty of this as well. I had my job. I had my 401k. I had my contributions that my employer matched with my contributions. Uh, I thought they were very generous at the time. And it was a forced savings plan. And this forced savings plan was really the only way I could be disciplined enough to put money away, money that I basically was not allowed to touch until I hit the age of 59 and a half, which most Americans may need a kick in the butt to have them force their savings into the account. So for 10 years, uh, I contributed to my 401k and then uh, I was bouncing in and out of the money market, and then what we call the science and technology fund, which was very aggressive, mutual funds. And I would, I was actually day trading my 401k. It's totally not allowed now. So I was flip-flopping in and out between the money market, which was very safe and secure, and then jumping into what we call the sci-fi, <laughs> science and technology. And I would, I would make a huge gain in the sci-fi in two days, and then I would pull it out, and I'd be in the mutual fund for the weekend. Well, it just so happens that we were uh, going to take Thursday and Friday off, 
And uh, we were going away for a long weekend. I remember, I vaguely remember taking it and putting it into, into the mutual fund, which was the highly secured uh, safe fund. And we were driving <clears throat> upstate New York. And I remember I turned on Bloomberg radio and the Dow was down at the time, three or 400 points. And that meant that the NASDAQ was down like five or 6% in one day. And now my science and technology fund was in the NASDAQ uh, for the most part. So all the way up on the drive, I couldn't remember if I went into the mutual fund or not. Uh, I got up there. This is, this is back in the old days with modems and things. And I, uh, Got to the cabin, I hooked up my laptop, and sure enough, I was in the mutual fund. My money was safe and secure. Uh, I got back to work that Monday following, and all my friends were destroyed. They were walking around holding their heads in their hands. Can't believe what happened. And they stayed in over the weekend, and that Monday was just as devastating as that Thursday. Uh, Thursday, Friday, they held over the weekend and it dropped another, I don't know how many points on Monday. And, and it just kept going down. My friends were completely destroyed, 30, 40, 50% losses over the course of a week. And here I am keeping my mouth shut like a cat who ate the mouse, knowing that my money was safe. And I really, at that moment, realized that this is no way for anyone. There's no plan. This is not planning for retirement. This is planning for a future disaster. And I had enough of that. Uh, I stayed in the, in the mutual fund. I might have caught a little, little uh, bounce uh, when things really bottomed out. Uh, I ended up quitting that job in 2005. And... Now I had this 401k that was dormant. Uh, I had about $100,000 in there. I was flipping houses. I was being a realtor. I let the thing, the 401k sit for two years. Uh, I came across a, a form of investing called note investing. And I got into a group where our mentor uh, was a very savvy Wall Street guy, and he was buying non-performing mortgages, residential mortgages from banks, um, from different various uh, large institutions. And I told him my situation. I said, listen, I have no cash. All I have is this stupid 401k that I can't get my hands onto. He says, I want you to go and read everything that you can about a thing called a self-directed IRA. I'm like, oh, what? And uh, so I found a couple of good websites uh, at the time. This is in 2007, uh, the end of 2006, beginning of 07. I read everything I could because I realized that this was the only chunk of money that I had to invest. This was my whole entire retirement, this hundred grand. How can I get my hands on it to buy some investments that I think are good, that I think are going to double maybe triple in value and in worth. So <clears throat> I read everything that I could. I realized that there were some false self-directed IRAs, meaning they say, yeah, you can, you can invest in anything you want as long as it's on this list. <laughs> and what's the list? Stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. That's not anything. I, I can't invest in real estate when I'm in stock sponsor or mutual funds, unless I'm investing in a, a real estate investment trust uh, or REIT, which I did not want to, because that's where the masses are. I didn't want to invest where the masses are. I wanted to invest in things that I knew and understood. And I had learned about this non-performing real estate mortgage business where I could buy a hundred thousand dollar mortgage for 30,000 bucks. The people owed me a hundred thousand dollars. I needed to get them to start paying on that 100000 And as they did, that 30000 investment would stack and stack and stack. And after maybe three or four years, I would get my $30,000 back 
and the borrower still owed me 85,000 bucks. I'm like, this is how you build wealth. This is exponential growth. So as those monthly payments came back into my IRA, I can't take that money and spend it. It has to stack up in my IRA. I get that thing back up to thirty or thirty-five thousand dollars. I go out and buy another note, and now I've got two notes inside my IRA. One that is performing. Maybe it's making four hundred dollars a month, five hundred a month, and I go out and buy another non-performing. I hire an attorney. I get that one to perform. And now I've got $800 a month flowing into my IRA. That money stacks. And before too long, I've got another 35,000 and I go out and buy another loan. And this process is the get rich slow process. It grows tax free or tax deferred until I start taking that money out when I'm 59 and a half, if I want to. I don't have to take any money out of this account until I'm 70 and a half. So I can continue to let it grow. Now I'm 62 years old, uh, 63 years old now. um, And I'm still purchasing non-performing notes in my self-directed IRA account uh, through various forms. I, I actually use a trust inside of my IRA That's for a future video or two or three on how to actually get that done and why I do it in a trust instead of just directly out of my custodian's account. Uh, Many good reasons for doing that. I didn't do it in the beginning. Uh, I learned all these fancy tricks uh, through people that are a lot smarter than I am, people that are actually in this group that are smart people. And uh, I've compiled all of these tips and tricks uh, into solid IRA. And so I managed to roll that $100,000 into a self-directed IRA and started purchasing this type of investment, among other things, among other investments as well. Some of these notes actually turned into owning uh, real estate outright, uh, turning them into rentals and then selling that real estate when the markets go up. Um, The idea here is it's forced investing. It's forced savings. I can't get my hands on the money. Uh, And then when you, I'm 63 now, uh, at 59 and a half, I can start making withdrawals, um, distributions, but I don't want to because I want this thing to exponentially continue to grow. So now, even though that I can get my hands on it, I am to the point now where I don't want to. Uh, That's where I want you to be. I want you to get these assets, let them start throwing off cash, let that cash stack up until comes time for me that I don't really want to work at all anymore. I may hit the point where I don't even want to look at any more non-performing notes or real estate investments in my IRA. I just want to go to France and live off the cash, uh, which you can. So this is spending for retirement and not saving for retirement. The saving happens automatically. The spending, you get the thrill of spending Thirty or forty thousand dollars on an investment, but it comes back to you, and it comes back to you quickly. Time flies when you're uh, get over about forty years old. Time just flies by, and uh, so hopefully you found this uh, enjoyable. Uh, this is part three of a long video series that we've created for you. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give us a thumbs up and a, a like. Do yourself and your family a favor and share this material with your youngsters and your family and friends. Uh, The sooner they start a self-directed IRA, the sooner they will start thinking about the notion that, hey, I may be able to retire by the time I'm 50 or 45 or 35 if they start really kicking some butt now. So again, thanks for joining me. My name is Mike Grisica. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, Subscribe to my uh, channel. 
and uh, we'll see you on the next video.